The three main ways we'll be discussing that molecules uh, absorb and emit light and, and, and emit this energy uh, are uh, rotations of molecules, uh, in which, for which we'll use the rigid rotor as our model, uh, vibrations of molecules, vibrations of bonds, uh, and our model there is the harmonic oscillator. And then electronic tra transitions. And there's not a specific model here. This is this is basically we use uh, the electronic structure theory. Um, you know, to predict this, we need things like computational chemistry uh, to predict uh, electronic energy levels of molecules. Now, these different types of uh, motions in our molecule involve very different amounts of energy. And so I've written these in order of increasing amount of energy. So rotations. Our, our low energy side, they don't it doesn't take very much energy to cause a molecule to start spinning. Uh, it takes more energy to do vibrations, so this would be middle amount. And exciting electronic states takes the most energy of these three uh, types of motions. And this relates to the light that's used to do the, the sorts of spectroscopy involved with these uh, three types of motion. Uh, and so uh, rotations, rotational spectroscopy uh, uses microwave radiation, uh, and so this is th these are sort of in the ten to the minus two to the ten to the first, uh, depending on the size of the molecule, uh, wave number, you know, differences in energy levels, and, and those are the, that's the frequency of light we need to use to observe this. Vibrations, on the other hand, occur in the infrared. And so these take significantly more energy, so something like hundreds to thousands of wave numbers. And then electronic states, uh, this is in the visible and ultraviolet part of the spectrum. Uh, and this is sort of 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fifth wave numbers, uh, or the energy of photons required to excite electrons to different like, excited states. And as you go to higher energies, you can continue to excite electrons, but you can excite them right off of the molecule. Uh, and do you know ionization type spectroscopy as well. Uh, and so to a first approximation, we can take each of these and kind of treat it separately. Um, and for the most part, that works pretty well. Uh, and for specific cases, sometimes you do have to consider you know vibrations and rotations together or vibrations and electronic states together. Um, but but we can just add their energies together. So the total energy of the molecule in terms of these three types of motion, are the energies of the rotations plus the energies of the vibrations plus the energies of the electrons, right, the electronic states. And we can do this because the Hamiltonians are separable, meaning we can treat this again as the same idea of separation of variables. Our total Hamiltonian is a product of the rotational part of the Hamiltonian, the vibrational part of the Hamiltonian, and the electronic part of the Hamiltonian. And so we can kind of solve each of these problems separately from each other, independently, and use the solutions for, for each of these uh, individually. Uh, and so because the energies are so different, we get different combinations of these things happening simultaneously. So for example, if we're doing microwave spectroscopy, because it's the lowest energy, we only have enough energy to excite rotations. So we can only cause the molecule to start spinning. But when we do infrared spectroscopy, uh, which is what I do in my research, we observe the vibrations plus the rotations. So we don't observe just one of these, right? If, if, we're, if we have enough energy to excite vibrations, that will simultaneously excite rotations as well in the molecule. And so we, we have row vibrational spectroscopy where we see both of these happening at the same time. And then when we get to electronic states, so this is given the name rho vibrational spectroscopy. When we get to electronic states, sorry, that should say visible and infrared light, UV vis, um, we see all three of these. So we see electronic transitions, you know, electrons being excited, plus vibrations, plus rotations. And this is called rho vibronic spectroscopy. So that includes rotational, vibrational, and electronic. 
And so we can also we can look at this schematically if we kind of consider different uh, energy levels in the molecule. We can kind of draw this, you know, this isn't completely to scale, but say we're looking at a diatomic molecule and to start with, we'll, we'll look at just diatomics and get to polyatomics at the end of the chapter. But, you know, we can represent the potential energy curve of a molecule and there'll be some excited state up here. And so going from one of these to the other, this would be an electronic transition. But within each of these electronic states, we have vibrational levels here. And we can see transitions within the vibrational levels. And then with each, if, if, within each of these vibrations, we have rotational energy levels. And so each of these is, is at a completely different scale. Uh, one thing to remember whenever we're doing spectroscopy is we're always looking at differences in energy. So the molecule is either absorbing or emitting light. Uh, so we can never observe just one energy level using light. We always see a transition from one energy level to another.